Greetings, everybody. This is Sabin Dimitrov, a.k.a. A Dance of the Astrowolf, and it is a pleasure to have you guys here for my next video. So I just kind of wanted to, to show you guys a fun little character that I am working on. I have different timelines of my characters and different variants of stuff that I am working on, and it's fun. I enjoy, you know... I enjoy being able to, to create stories, and I have a friend called Nathan Harris, and he's been very, very supportive of my stories that I've been posting, and he really, really likes the, the work that I put on them. And uh, I've just been working on different storylines and such, and it's fun being able to, to make stories about them. Timeline 1 is uh, the Astral Wolf, Timeline 2 is the Astral Goat, but that's kind of more like a concept build, so I don't really consider it really a character but i still have it because it's there timeline three is sibin and drugar timeline four is uh my book actually uh with plamuk and uh arsenal x actually <clears throat> timeline five is a kivuakians uh you know with uh uh from the uh the channel fena uh, uh, it's F-E-N-N-A-H, uh, they make, uh, great content, uh, about the, uh, about the Kivuakians, it's pretty much alien species, and then Timeline 6, which is one of my favorites, if not my favorite, uh, this one is Sabin with the Grinyans, and this is a fun one, because there's a lot of really cute things that happen between Sabin and the Grinyans, and, uh, I, you know, enjoy being able to, you know, uh, to be able to uh, make cute little stories about this. So in this story, uh, we are going, going, going to be talking about Heckle, which is this cutie right here. This is Heckle. Kind of, kind of a creepy looking, scary creature, little psychotic, kind of crazy. But, uh, so pretty much long story short, what happened with... Uh, so what happened with my character in this storyline is, for some weird reason, he somehow got into Wari's realm. And Wari is that, like, giant, creepy, laughing wolf character that makes creatures like Heckle. Wari is kind of a, uh, a principality, kind of like this, like, ruler, this, like, giant, scary wolf that is capable of, you know, unparalleled destruction. Give me a second. These are different variants of Wari. And Wari is this giant, creepy, laughing wolf that has three eyes on each side of his body. And uh, he's he, he's supposed to be technically uh, similar to Wari, uh, the... Uh, I guess he's a laughing demon in, uh, in uh, Japanese culture, but in this timeline, he's just a giant, scary, overlord wolf creature that... It is creepy. Yeah. Yeah, it has, it has big old bouncy whiskers. I don't know. I found the whiskers bouncing kind of cute. But pretty much, yeah, this this is a giant creature that has his own little realm and terrorizes people and causes a lot of trouble. Remember, guys, this is just kind of science fiction, fantasy timeline. But, you know, I like to, you know, to be able to, you know, experiment and, you know, grow my, uh, the stuff that I'm working on. Anywho. When Sabin first met Heckle, you know, she wasn't sure what to do about him. She sensed something very, very different. And, you know, Sabin wasn't really sure what was going on. He didn't really know really much about, you know, the Grinions or, uh, or Heckle or, uh, worry but he really likes soft fluffy creatures so when he ran into heckle he was like what the heck who is she and uh and uh she actually squatted down in front of him to take a look at him because she stands at around 10 ish plus feet tall so she's actually quite large and uh yeah she would just look at him just kind of curiously trying to figure out who he was. You see, other people that, you know, went into that realm would often try to hurt her because they thought that she was hostile. 
and usually she, her her intended purpose was supposed to be hostile. <clears throat> Her uh her quick uh, d uh description is as crudest but terrifying. She was more in a sense just curious. Her 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 original purpose was supposed to be a creature of unparalleled destruction, a concept creature, N uh not like a normal Grinion, a Grinion that can think outside of the box, has its own sentience, not a hive mind, and is capable of, you know, thinking. But unfortunately, there was some level of corruption inside uh, the, uh, the the process of making her. So unfortunately, she started her life with subpar uh, mental capacity. But, you know, that played very, very positive for her. Because the Grinster, who originally was known for just horrible evils upon humanity, doing horrible, horrible things, having a vengeance because of all the, you know, because of, like, humanity being stupid, and he sees humanity as just a hindrance. But the uh, the Grinster actually show, opened up a little bit of his heart to Heckle and wanted to have her be used for a better purpose instead of just being used as a puppet for uh, for worry. So when she met Sabin, Sabin, you know, likes soft, fluffy creatures. And she was gently tracing her nose across different parts of Sabin, sniffing him and trying to figure out what he smelled like, what, you know, what kind of uh, things that she could sense from him. And just out of nowhere, Sabin just gives her a little smooch on the nose. And, you know, her eyes opened wide. Mind you guys, she doesn't have pupils. Like, she, she doesn't have pupils, so when you look into her eyes, they're just kind of voidless, which is just kind of like a void. <clears throat> they seem soulless, unless you have a, you know, connection with her, so it's very concerning and very, uh, makes it uneasy because, you know, they're just staring at you, and you're not really sure if they're staring at you or something else, but, you know, so she would just kind of look at Sabin, kind of with, like, wide eyes, like, what did they just do to me? And then Sabin would just, you know, gently reach up and just pet her soft face. And she wasn't used to, you know, affection. She was used to actually having to, uh, to, you know, uh, to, like, uh, exterminate the people that would come into Warrior's realm that would try to hurt her. In fact, some of the other Grinions would actually make fun of her and mistreat her because of her, of her simple-mindedness. But Sabin and her seemed to really hit it off at first look. And it was very, very sweet. And, and the Grinster, which is... Come on. The Grinster, which is this terrifying beast, uh, he is about six and a half, almost seven feet tall when, you know, walking on all fours. But when standing fully erect, he's like 12-ish feet tall. And like, um, like 20, 24, 2500 pounds of just pure muscle. His fur is actually pretty much a interlaced armor. Incredibly tough. And he can take, you know, tank shells to his body and just shrug them off like they are nothing. The Grinster's uh, description is wise and evil. And originally, he was, you know, just just downright evil. Spread as much destruction and mayhem as possible. Had no care for anyone else. Just wanted to spread destruction because he was angry. And pretty much what happened is that uh, his original purpose when he was created was supposed to be a teacher. He was actually made right after the, after the Great Fall. And his original purpose was supposed to be a teacher. He was supposed to help, you know, lead humanity in the right direction. But when he got news of all that, you know, evil stuff and sin and everything going on, he got enraged and swore a vengeance against humanity for being stupid and for ruining the universe. So he made it his goal to spread as much destruction upon humanity as possible. Uh, but, um... 
That is until Sabin came in the picture, at least in the storyline. And it, it's fun being able to, you know, put, you know, my character in different storylines and see how they all run. But yeah, this is a terrifying creature. I imagine that, that they have a muzzle, kind of like a tiger. Not like long as a wolf, but still longer than, not a human face, but kind of like a tiger, in between a tiger and a wolf face. So, big old set of chompers. Big giant set of chompers. But yeah, as you know, things went on, Heckle would actually try to play around with him. And she would do stuff like this, where he would be like reading a book or playing on his phone, and she would walk up to him, making silly faces. And then, uh, this is from uh, Two Kinds, by the way. Uh, Markiplier's brother, if I remember right, made uh, the Two Kinds comic. So these ones are called Kedrin. But uh, yeah, Heckle would like walk up to him with it, with it, with it, with the cute look on 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 her face, kind of like that, sticking her tongue out, and then she would you know toy around with with, with Sabin playfully. She doesn't really exactly know how to show affection, unfortunately, because she's not used to that. But it's, it's still adorable. So Heckle the Grinion loves doing cute, quirky stuff with Sabin, even though she is more simple-minded. She still shows a great love and affection for her little human friend, and will often show her love in unusual and strange ways. She sometimes gets disappointed if Sabin doesn't understand that she's trying to show affection, but then she also understands that she runs very differently and tries to be patient with them. Even though Heko has a limited processing power, she still learns, and one of the things that makes her such an effective Grinion is that because of her concept build, she is actually polymorphic, which allows her to heal exponentially quick. She can form extra appendages temporarily. Her tail can split into two or three pieces, allowing her to grab onto things and be prehensile. She can form another eye on the back of her head. She can form tentacles out of the back of her body. But overall, what you guys saw was what she usually looks like. One of the cute ways that she likes to show him affection is to, to give him little kisses. Sabin actually taught her to give kisses. And she has very soft fuzzy lips, and a strange unusual fur that is on the inside of her lips, giving her extra sensory areas, areas and abilities. You guys know how horses kind of, you know, use their lips to kind of poke at things when they are curious of what it is? That's kind of what she tries to do when she is curious with Sabin or something else that's edible. <clears throat> yes, Grinion sometimes eat people. So, but, you know, instead of the inside of her, of her lips being fleshy, they're covered in this, like, weird kind of velvety, kind of fuzzy fur tentacle stuff because that allows her to get more information and to taste stuff without putting it inside her mouth. So her kisses often feel very soft and very unusual, but very, very fluffy. So she will often try to give him little kisses, usually on his face or on his nose, but sometimes on the lips. It's very cute because she's very, very gentle and very innocent about it. And, you know, she, like it is, she doesn't ever want to hurt him. So... Yeah, there's just sometimes where, you know, you might come across Sabin and Heckle just kind of just gently nibbling on different parts of him, you know, because she just wants to be around him. And it's very, very cute. She has a dog-like mentality being around somebody that she likes. She's intelligent. She is sentient. She's just a little slow. But Sabin also himself is a little bit slow, but he does try his best to learn. And he also uh, grows, tries to grow in wisdom. And one of the things that really won him over in the Grinster's heart is that the Grinster also likes wisdom. And when he saw that Sabin also uh, pursues wisdom, he grew curious. And, you know, the Grinster is super protective of Heckle and will kill anyone that tries to mistreat her. In fact, uh, Worry has had to go out of his way to make sure other Grinions keep out of the way of the Grinster and Heckle, or else the Grinster is going to eat them if they pick on Heckle. And uh, so the Grinster is super protective of Heckle, and sometimes he has had to, you know, kill people who are trying to hurt her. 
But when he,、uh, he saw for the first time somebody give her a kiss, it was a very unusual thing for him. So he grew very, very curious and sensed his、uh, sensed Sabin's you know quest for wisdom. Now the Grinster, unlike other evil creatures, doesn't just stay in, in his own evil. When he sees something new or learns something new, and realizes that his own way is wrong, he does try to incorporate that. But unfortunately, because he spends, like, you know, all of his time in the warrior's realm, he doesn't exactly have too much time to learn outside of the realm and much about the earth. But he learns a little bit from people here and there, when he is sent on missions by、uh, Worry. Worry is actually scared of him because the Grinster.、Uh, you guys saw on one the, on some of the pictures how Worry had his、uh, horn、uh, snapped off. There are actually two、uh, legends that go why one of his horns got snapped off. One of them was that God struck him with lightning. And banished him to that realm,、uh, and that shattered one of his horns. And then the other one was that the Grinster snapped off one of the horns and stabbed Worry like repeatedly with the horn until Worry decided, you know, to behave and you know do what the Grinster wanted, even though Worry is still technically in charge. The Grinster is the mastermind behind most of what goes on, and that's one of the reasons why Worry is so, you know, what you call it. Uh, it's one of the is、uh, often so effective and you know successful because the Grinster is the wise one. He's the one who does all the heavy thinking. So, when he sensed Sabin's, you know, quest for wisdom. And his good side, Sabin's description by the Grinians was good and wise, while the Grinsters was evil and wise. So you guys can can can, can kind of see a similarity between the two. And the Grinster, knowing that Sabin had wisdom on stuff that he did not know, instead of killing Sabin, wanted to know more about him. And guess what happened? Uh. uh One of the things that would happen is that、uh, when the Grinster first met Sabin, he did something very similar that he did to Heckle, and started petting the the Grinster's soft nose. And you guys saw how the Grinster had those、uh, these long strands of fur hanging over his face. Those are actually hiding tentacles, and those tentacles he can use when staring into people's eyes. To hack into people's brains and have them be under his control, and he can do pretty much with them whatever he wishes when those tentacles are, you know, attached to the person's cerebrum. But for Sabin, he was just you know just petting you know petting、uh, the Grinster's face, because it was soft and fluffy, and the Grinster is actually known for having the softest fur out of all the Grinians, surprisingly, and.、Uh, The Grinster, you know, placed one of the、uh, one of the the, the, the tentacle-filled fur fluffs on top of Sabin's head, but didn't, you know, engage the tentacles. Sabin just just thought he he was was just being being playful, but the Grinster knew that Sabin didn't know what was going on. But you know, still en- <clears throat> still enjoyed the、uh, the affection. So after a while of petting him. The Grinster decided to talk with Sabin and see what was going on. And、uh, over time, as they talked, the Grinster、uh, gained、uh, great, aff-、uh, great, you know, affirmation and, you know, respect for Sabin, because despite, you know, the horrible history that the Grinster had, Sabin was more than happy to, you know,、uh, happy to help him learn. And you know that really started to form a very close bond between the Grinster and Sabin at quite a heavy rate.、Uh, the, and the Grinster, you know, who's able to see the truth and judge people by their actions and intentions, sensed that Sabin had no ill intent, and that really, you know, won him over, won Sabin over, because well, no, won him over on Sabin because 
you know, this is a creature of unparalleled destruction and thousands of years of destruction. And yet, you know, Sabin has somehow found a place inside his heart. So over the course of about a year or two, they really, really grew close. This turd over here is, is a warrior's right-hand man. And he is exceptionally uh, troublesome to deal with. He's, he's a turd. And pretty much what, what goes on with him is that he likes to um, uh, punish anyone else that steps out of line. And he thought it was a good idea to go ahead and try to pick on Sabin. Because, you know, Sabin was starting to, you know, have an influence with all the, uh, with, with the other Grinions and even Wari himself. Because Wari enjoys, kind of enjoys the unique nature of Sabin. Finds him, uh, finds him curious and silly. And, you know, wants to learn about him. So. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Another way that, that, that Heckle likes to show affection is that she likes to take one of his hands and place it. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, uh, because it, it's, it's a way that, you know, that she shows, uh, you know, so it shows her trust. And, uh, it's something that Sabin is not used to. He's never had a girlfriend. He's never had anyone close to him like that. So for him, he quickly would pull his hand away because it would feel awkward. He's like, no, I shouldn't do that. But when, you know, when, you know, the Grinster let him know what, you know, the level of trust uh, that, you know, Heckle was showing, you know, Sabin, you know, only because of Heckle allowed her to do that. And yeah, hers are very, very soft. And uh, that's one of the ways that she would show a very deep trust for her little human friend. Another, oop, oh, gee, what occurs? Oh, my gosh. Hold on a second. It's been a turd. Oh, gee, what occurs? Here we are. Okay. Oh, where did I find? Oh, here we are. Another way is that she likes to pick Sabin up and carry him around with her. As she, as she uh, hums along, just doing her little thing, and exploring. Warrior's realm is huge, and there's a lot of stuff to explore. And Hako Yushi stays in one place, so when she has her her little human with her, she feels safer and more confident. And she likes to go exploring with the little human, because she she knows that Sabin is also exploring with her, and it's very very cute. She uses uh, usually her left hand. To place underneath uh, Sabin's legs, so he can kind of sit on her hand, and then she uses her her right hand to hold him close to her chest, with her head usually on uh, usually on the right side or the left side of Sabin's shoulder, and placing her face next to his, and usually Sabin will will, will give her small smooches, smooches on on her cheek or a muzzle, as they walk around, and it's it's very very sweet. Most Grinions don't get the chance to feel things outside the hive mind, like ideals of worry. So, Sabin was very blessed that he was able to run into Heckle and the Grinster before the other ones got to him. She, uh, she always makes sure to snuggle him tight so that way he's not un uncomfortable but still secure. It's very cute. Mind you, Heckle is still very tall, and even though she stands at around 10 plus feet tall, she still likes to hold her human very close and cares for him deeply. Another way that she likes to show love for him is that she will, will, will gently trace her tail along his body, feeling him and gathering information. Remember, she is polymorphic, so any part of her body is capable of gathering information. And she, you know, likes to... Uh, Use her tail to make sure that she knows that Sabin is there, even when she's busy doing something else. And what looks like a weird little little grabby tentacle thing will often wrap itself around one of Sabin's legs or one of his arms or on an article of clothing that is secure on Sabin, so that way she can keep track of him. It's not a leash, but it's a way that she can hold on to him without having to use her hands. 
And it's something very, very special that worry has actually taken account of and, you know, grows more curious of the human. And over time, Sabin and worry actually started to become close because, you know, Sabin is still an incredibly smart individual, even though he is a little slow at times. And, but, you know, uh, but, you know, the worry and, you know, the uh, other sentient Grinians really like hearing what he has to say because they are always, you know, stuck in that little realm. They don't really get a chance to get out very often. But ever since Sabin came into the picture, that has actually allowed, you know, a few of the Grinians to ac accompany him back to Earth and just to see how the world has progressed. And the Grinster is usually the one that, you know, will stay with Sabin, you know, wherever Sabin is staying. And uh, over time, the Grinster started to have a very deep affection for Sabin as well. And will often, you know, sit down, you know, you know how like bears sometimes sit down. That's kind of how the Grinster sits down too. And then he will use his tail to go up and hold Sabin close to his chest. And pretty much completely encapsulate him in the very thick fur. And mind you, his fur is riddled with fluffy tentacles. And the tentacles are just a way to, you know, sense things around him. Uh, without him having to look at it. And, uh, yeah, the tentacles clean Sabin, they heal Sabin, they work on little parts of, on parts of his body that are not working properly. And as a gift of friendship, because Sabin only had one eye that works, the Grinster wanted to give him a new eye that, that worked. And, you know... And, and the eye did work. It used a thing called soul vision. So the eye could sustain catastrophic damage and punishment, but still be able to work. Because as long as Sabin, you know, lives, and as long as, as his soul is still on earth, you know, the eye will continue to work. And this also allows Sabin a very detailed interface on being able to see people's intentions, see their you know, their thoughts and weaknesses. It's a predatory standpoint, so it's information that would give Sabin a a psychological or physical advantage. Uh, so it's kind of set in the way of what way can I get an advantage over these people around me? But Sabin, you know, started to figure out how to make that eye work so he can help people. And it's a very, very cool way for Sabin to see because he can now supernaturally see what's going on with people and adjust his approach if needed. And, you know, sometimes he will see a beggar on, on or, you know, or, or a homeless person on the road. And if it's a person that really needs help and that's not, you know, just wasting resources, you know, that's given to him, he will take them to the right shelter, the right places. And the Grinster you know, actually tries to help Sabin do better. He puts aside his own wants and, and, you know, realized that, you know, he needs to help somebody. His original, you know, Sabin reminded him that, you know, his original purpose, even though he was supposed to be a teacher, it's still there. He can still be a teacher, even if it's just one person. And one of the most famous sayings of the Grinster and Sabin, better one than none. It's better if you bless even just a single person on this planet than none at all. So whenever, you know, they are frustrated, the other one will always say, hey, better one than none, buddy. We're going to take care of this. We're going get, to get, get through this one day at a time. And, you know... Sabin and the Grinster are both very wise individuals, and they both seek wisdom. And because they are working together, you know, now, you know, it's a very, very special relationship that they have. Deeper than any friendship that, you know, a normal person could have. You know, the Grinster, you know, watches Sabin's soul, makes sure he's doing okay. You know, and if Sabin is getting angry, the Grinster will try to give him encouragement. And in fact, you know, in this storyline, the Grinster started to read uh, one of the Sabin's Bible app. 
and you know you know give him little verses here and there to help him do better and Sabin started to see a transformation inside this terrifying creature of unparalleled power and you know it really you know started to you know turn the grinster into a pretty pretty cool fellow at least with Sabin the grinster doesn't doesn't give a I give a turd about the rest of the world he doesn't care about anyone else, but he does care about Sabin. And that better, uh, that better one than none uh, philosophy really helps him, you know, stay strong with Sabin. And he will show respect to Sabin's family and, you know, his, you know, his friends, but he doesn't like them. He only likes Sabin. But, you know, it's very special with, you know, how close Sabin, the Grinster, and Heckle all became. And, you know... Yeah, so it's really, really cool, to, you know, seeing how, you know, they have a very special friendship and relationship that no other Grinion or human has. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool, you know. So sometimes you'll see Sabin's head sticking out from underneath the, the Grinster's giant head. And as Sabin's, you know, is completely, you know, covered in a cocoon of fur it's cute actually because the grinster is very very affectionate toward him no one else except him and heckle but hey it works out and so ben loves the affection because it helps him with his restlessness and helps him with his anxiety because he gets to be held with some held by something soft and warm and, you know he, he knows that he's safe with but yeah anyway so you know, Heckle may look simple, but inside of her body is a quantum computer of unimaginable power and ability. She's <clears throat> a little slow on things, but she's able to adapt really quick. Despite being more simple-minded, she is one of the most capable and advanced Grinions ever to exist. She is supposed to be a concept model, a test bed that Wari has made to test out his limits. And luckily, he hasn't realized just how much potential she has. If put in the wrong hands, she can bring down entire countries. Luckily, the Grinster and Sabin have been working very hard on keeping her hidden and keeping her, you know, in the right hands. But the Great Wolf has actually seen Sabin and Heckel having very intricate conversations. Not usually in words, but just in thought and body movement. In fact, she, um, she unlocks herself for Sabin. And it shows a very special and close love that she has never shown to anyone else, and probably will never again. She is close to the Grinster and cares about him deeply, but Sabin has a place in her soul, and she wants to cultivate that and protect it. There was actually one time where the four-armed Grinion tried to mess with Sabin because he was trying to stay in charge and show that he was the only one that Wari needed. You can guess how that went. Heckle is one of those few that will go Hulk mode. And you know how the Hulk uh, slammed, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Loki into the ground repeatedly? That's pretty much, what, pretty much what she did. She grabbed him, grabbed, you know, that four-armed Grinion and just started tearing into him. Ripping off chunks of flesh, fur broke most of his teeth actually ripped uh, br actually he she actually broke off one of his horns uh shattered two of his arms and started slamming him into things in a blind fit of rage trying to kill him <clears throat> heko was only stopped be by the grinster before she killed the other grinion very rarely has she ever shown her rage and actually is close to the shown her rage and she is actually close to the power capabilities of the grinster who make which makes her an absolutely terrifying enemy if her anger is ever turned toward you because her true potential has not been unlocked yet and because she has not been hyper enhanced yet you know she still you know remains kind of passive but you know if she is ever optimized and turned into a deadly weapon Nothing will be able to stand in her way because she is, like I said, polymorphic. She can adapt to almost any situation immediately. And, you know, when she was fighting the four-armed Grinion, she got hurt a little bit. But then her body formed armored fur. 
that would interlace, much like Kevlar. So when in battle, she can't get cut anymore. So the four-armed Grinion got terrified because he realized that she was about to kill him. And he was very surprised that the Grinster stopped her from doing that. Because the Grinster hates the four-armed Grinion. And I mean absolutely hates him. Like I said, guys, this is not canon. This is my, my timeline. So I'm just telling you guys from my storyline how the, how the things work. But yeah, so the four-armed Grinion is kind of a butt. And the Grinster hates him. But the Grinster also knows that he wants to try to keep a decent relationship with uh, Wari, even though he doesn't like Wari very much. He finds Wari to be simple-minded, stupid, and prideful. And and Wari kind of knows that. And he's just like, well, fine. You, you do whatever you want. I'm doing what I'm doing. And, you know, the Grinster's like, fine. I'll, yeah, I'll do whatever I'm doing. You stay out of my way. And, you know, Wari's like, fine. Yeah. And, you know, it's a very uneasy relationship but they know that they both need each other to make things work out so even though they don't like each other very much they still try to keep things on agreeable terms <clears throat> much like the u.s and russia right now Boo yeah anyway but yeah so anyway uh I mean, as long as we're not rushing into things ha huh? boo you know i'm really putin on a show ha huh? i'm sorry <laughs> But anyway, so, uh, yeah. I can make Slavic jokes. I'm from Bulgaria. I'm allowed to make those. But, uh, yeah, so, um. But, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, it's sweet that she's so protective of her little human. And, like I said, she does cute little, little things like this with Sabin. And, like, you know, sometimes, you know, when they are playing up, actually, on Earth. She will actually visit Sabin on Earth, and they'll go play around, you know, in this lake. And there's, like, beautiful little hot springs, and she'll shake next to him to try to, you know, invite him to play with her in the water. And it's very, very cute, because, you know, she has never shown a level of affection for people before. And, you know, it's a very good way to help her evolve and, you know, have a sense of, you know, a special friend. So, Sabin and the Grinster <coughs> and Heckle all work together to have a good time, and they really care about each other, and, yeah, it's just, it's something very, very, very precious that, you know, that they, they have. And, uh, yeah, you know, like it is, later on, later on, um, Wari starts to, you know, form an affinity for the human, Wari actually starts to care about the human. Because it's just like, hey, this human has a positive influence on my Grinions. He, they, I, I, you know, I'm curious about this little human. You know, because one of the things that the, that the Grinster is obsessed with is laughter. That's one of the things that he likes to do is spread laughter, insane laughter, but laughter nevertheless around and cause people to go insane with it. So that way they fall into a, a, an, 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 a unstoppable level of insanity. And the more scared you get, the stronger worry's grip on you is. And it just gets bad from there. But worry saw that Sabin spreads a lot of laughter for a human. At Sabin's job, he loves to tell jokes, he likes to make kids laugh, he likes to spread joy, and Sabin naturally is a very giggly person. He giggles at the smallest things, you know, but it's genuine joy that's in his heart. And, you know, Wari sees that, and he's just like, there's a different kind of laughter. Because, you know, he hasn't seen joy, joyful laughter in thousands of years. <clears throat> and... You know, everything just kind of seems to merge together when you're kind of stuck in one spot. Even if you learn about outside stuff, it all just kind of gets lost in a sea of mumble jumble and stuff. So, Worry started to like Sabin. Originally because of the laughter that he would spread. But when he first met Sabin face to face, guess what Sabin started to do? He started to, 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 to pet Worry's face. And he's like, he's like, 
You got big old fuzzy lips. And like he sang a song about Rory's fluffy lips, apparently. And, you know, and you giggled at it. And Rory was just like, I shouldn't kill this human. They do make me laugh. I want to keep them around. They aren't really a threat. You know, and like, you know, you, you can kind of see the, the thought process of this like giant, terrifying overlord wolf. And yeah, you know, so, you know, Wari just kind of lays down there, cupping his like giant paws, you know, around Sabin so he could sit on them. As Sabin would like pet his face. And mind you, Wari, Wari's mouth is about you know, five feet, nine inches. He's huge. So he can, you know, eat Sabin in one bite if he wanted to, but he doesn't. But his face is super fluffy. He's incredibly fluffy. So Sabin, being kind of the, the, the naive, lovable, lovable derp that he is, is like, hey, you're fluffy. I want to play with your fur. And, you know, that level of affection was sensed by a worry. And mind you, when the Grinster found out where Sabin was, he was about ready to go ape turds because Worry is not a friend of humanity. He hates all of humanity. He doesn't like him at all. But, you know, Sabin found a special little place in Worry's heart. So, yeah, so you have, you, so you have this, like, giant fluffy wolf who enjoys face rubs from, you know, his little human friend. And in fact, as time went on, Sabin would actually sit with his legs underneath Wari's tongue, sitting with you know with the uh, with uh, the uh, the front teeth under, under um, underneath his bum, and then he would use his his hands to actually rub Wari's face right here. Like this Sabin's head, he's using his his arms to you know. To, to, to pet Wari's face. And that's kind of how he would, you know, would do that. So it was a sign of trust from, from of trust from both sides. Because Wari is actually allowing someone to show him affection. And in turn, he gets, you know, face rubs. It's kind of one of the things that, that, you know, Wari really likes is face rubs. You'll often see him having, you know, Grinions give him face rubs. And it's actually kind of, kind of cute. Because it's just like, I got my little human. And uh, it's a little awkward. Wari has a really slobbery mouth. So Sabin often has to wash himself off after that happens. But yeah. Now, mind you, the first time the Grinster saw that, he was like, what the heck are you doing? But he didn't jump into, into you know, conclusion yet. War, uh, the Grinster knows that he needs to think first before he acts. Because he has often acted out of anger first before thinking, and that's landed him a lot of trouble. So before attacking Wari, he was like, Wari, what are you doing? And he's like, my little human friend is giving me face rubs. And you know, Wari, it's, 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 it's like a face massage. Wari really loves face massages. And Sabin was like, oh yeah, uh, apparently this big fluffy wolf lacks affection. And the Grinster obviously realizing that Sabin doesn't know that he's actually petting the Overlord's face. The giant scary wolf that is, you know, has dominion over this entire realm. You know, that's the face that Sabin is petting. And, you know, and you know, so, 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 Sabin's giggling up a storm because, you know, War is making funny little, little, no little noises as Sabin's rubbing his face. And, you know, Wari is, you know, it's is enjoying himself because it's like, huh, this is fun. This is something new. And, you know, and as time goes on, Sabin and Wari start to form a relationship. And, you know, the light in Sabin's soul really starts to make a very dark and scary and evil place really start to glow. And, you know, even though most of the Grinions are kind of hive mindish, they usually stay out of his way. And uh, not many actually caused him trouble. There was actually one time where Little Grin actually tried to pick on Sabin. And, uh, well, Sabin kind of suffered a, uh, 
a、uh, episode of rage, and pretty much was on the verge of killing Little Grin. But you know, this time,、uh, this time, well, like I said, guys, this is comp- this is just you know my kind of fairy tale storyline. So don't take any of this for canon. At this time. God actually teleported Sabin away from that and teleported him to 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 a church so he could calm down. It's、so、one one of the way, ways to kind of snap Sabin back from psychosis is kind of get him to a place where he knows where he's safe, and that kind of makes everything else fall into place. And、uh, yeah, God has to do that a lot, but he's very very patient with Sabin because he knows that he's trying and he knows that you know. That you know, Sabin is dealing with things that no human ever has, and no human ever should. So, Sabin has a very special place in this plan for a reason. So, but yeah, so it's just a, it's not without you know divine help. Like I said, guys, just as a, as a reminder, just completely storyline, playful,、uh, you know. Make believe, so don't ever don't take this stuff seriously. It's just me being creative and making kind of a fun alternate history. But、uh, yeah, so you know, it's just kind of a quick little overview of how you know、uh, my character forms relationships with characters. And in fact, Worry, after a couple years, you know, liked Sabin so much, he wanted to give Sabin a very special companion. Two special companions, and these are giant wolves. Like the wolves at the withers stand at at about six feet, so their head, so their neck can actually rest on Sabin's、uh, shoulder, and uh, and uh, you know, so Sabin actually has two very intelligent, very wise, you know, predatory wolves that are by his side. And Worry, usually, you know, a trickster, made these wolves good for Sabin, and bonded them to Sabin's soul, not his own. And that meant that these two wolves, their entire purpose was to help be a extra level of conscience for Sabin. And it's really, really cool because you have these two wolves. That speak, you know, in unison. They are connected to each other. They are connected to Sabin, and these two wolves will do everything they can to help Sabin make the right choice. So if Sabin is angry and about to go into a psychotic rage, they try to help him calm down. If Sabin is thinking about doing something bad, they give him 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 a verse, and they recite a verse or even a passage, and say, "What about this? Think about it this way." They will do everything they can to actually. Try to you know make Sabin make the right choice, and、uh, yeah, and in fact, you know, Worry will sometimes even have Sabin over for dinner, and they will have a beautiful, lavish meal that is fit for kings, that's fit for world leaders, like it's like a beautiful you know Japanese meal. They have sake, they have like. Actual traditional sushi and all the all, like any Japanese dish that you can possibly think of, and、uh, yeah, that's kind of what you know what you know Worry does for Sabin to show that you know to show appreciation for his friendship is give him various gifts and have him over for dinner, and they often have very deep and in depth conversations, and you know after a while. Worry would、uh, would even let Sabin pray over over the meal, you know, thanking God for you know for the bountiful food that they're about to eat, and kind of you know made Sabin think about the verse of making a table in the presence of your enemies. Sabin in this realm that is completely hostile to humankind and pretty much anything else outside of Grinians is being able to have meals with this terrifying, you know. Wolf overlord creature that is capable of spreading, you know, boundless destruction upon anything that he sees that he wants to spread. And in turn, that gives Sabin more ability and more gifts to help people back on Earth. 
So, even though Sabin is dealing with a lot of stuff that's hurting him, there's a lot of stuff that he's able to do to help people as well. And, you know, one of the things that keeps Sabin going, despite, you know, a cancerous mutation in his body that's trying to kill him, is better one than none. He tries to go each and every day, trying to find if there's someone that he can bless. And, you know... It's it's a very weird, convoluted storyline, but it's kind of a fun one because this one goes very deep into the battle between good and evil. And, you know, what was originally intended for evil can be turned around for good. You know, that's one, that's one of the really cool things, you know, cool things about God is that he's able to turn, you know, what was originally intended for evil into good. You know, now, like I said, guys, as a re reminder, this is a, you know, this is, you know, just, you know, me making a fun little story spin off of a really cool character that I think is kind of cool. You know, he's a big, scary, evil wolf, but, you know, I've, you know, I've, it's fun being able to try to find a more positive spin off of it and turn it into something kind of interesting and cool instead of just downright just bleh. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's fun and, uh, Kind of, kind of, just go goes to show some of the stuff that you know, that you know, I like to work on in, in my in my time off of you know, YouTube. You know, I like to make YouTube videos, and you know, I figured why not be able to you know include you guys in on it as well. But uh, yeah, so it's fun. You know, Sabin has has great joy. You know, hanging out with his Grinion friends. You know, they do care about him. You know, the ones that are able to think sentiently and you know have their own free will. And, uh, yeah, it's, you know, something, something very, very special. And, uh, in fact, uh, uh, Worry has actually gone out of his way to give Sabin resources to help make his life a little bit easier to deal with. Because even though Sabin is dealing with a cancerous corruption inside of his body because of a gift that was supposed to be good, but unfortunately, Grinions and humans are not compatible. So unfortunately, uh, the Grinion eyeball that Sabin was given started to corrupt Sabin's body. So, uh, so Warrior and the others try to find a way to help make Sabin's life a little easier and give him any resources that they can to help him achieve the goals that he has in mind. And in fact, there was actually, you know, a church that needed to, to be built in another country and Sabin was like, hey, can you guys help, help, help me build that? And they did. And it was amazing because you have this workforce of like 300 Grinions building that church within a week. And it was immaculate. No, nothing out of place. Everything perfectly set up. And yeah, and they even did yard work. And because of that, that church was able to serve a lot of people. But yeah, it's just, you know, it's just kind of a fun, you know, twist to the original story that I was able to make. And, you know, I hope that you guys will, will be able to enjoy more insight on the stories and stuff that I'm making, guys. Because I can't do only Ark of War videos and gameplay videos. I want to try to, you know, spread out my stuff but keep my content unique and fun and interesting. So, if you guys have, you know, have any, you know, ideas or insights or, you know... Think, you know, think, you know, have any thoughts about my content, please do let me know because I would love to be able to hear you guys' content about, you know, about my stories. I hear you guys' comments about my stories and the creativity that I have put on my channel. Like I said, guys, you know, this is nowhere near professional, but I, I want to be able to at least, you know, try to put a personal spin on things and keep things interesting for you guys so that way we can all enjoy. And yes, I have a little bit, a little bit of a biased. You know, I think War is cool because he's a big old fluffy wolf. If he was a lion or anything else, I probably wouldn't. I've always loved wolves ever since I was little, so that's kind of one of the reasons why I went out of my way to kind of make a semi-redeeming storyline for, you know, this character. Because, I, you know, I love wolves and the Grinions are kind of cool looking, so, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so thank you guys very much for just being here for this video. Thank you guys for just, you know, uh, you know, for, you know, sticking with me through the, 
sporadic and very erratic upload schedule. I hope you guys will continue to enjoy my content and I really want to thank you guys for just, you know, being those awesome Wolfpack members that you guys are. I want to thank you guys for just for for being so supportive. I really look forward to, you know, you know, hearing what you guys have to say. Always remember to like, share, and subscribe, guys, because the faster we can get to a thousand subscribers, the better. Oh, and uh, by the way, guys, if you want to, you know, have more insight on this, look up Little Laughter's gameplay or Little Laughter's lore or Grinion lore, and you can get some insight on how all this works. But uh, yeah, like I said, guys, this is my alternate storyline on Wari and kind of Sabin's, uh, you know, interaction with the Grinions and just kind of having a fun way to run things out. But uh, yeah, just... Yeah, thank you guys for just being the awesome Wolfpack members that you guys are. And I greatly look forward to be greatly look forward to, you know, having you guys, you know, uh you know, on my next videos. Uh yeah. You guys stay awesome and always remember, God bless.